So this is a hello to the future from Kevin Moore. And we're speaking in April 2007. And we're thinking about the future and whether the stretch of water that I'm looking at will be up to that house over there by 2020 or whether it will take until 2030 for that house to be inundated. Nobody knows, but we certainly know that we've got abrupt climate change underway and things are going to change dramatically over the next decade. Well, look, look, climate change is the big one, I mean, and unless we do something about rapidly escalating carbon dioxide levels, um, the planet will almost certainly be uninhabitable by the end of the, this century, possibly by mid-century. UN panel of climate, on climate change talking about a four degree or possibly six degree rise in temperature, and people saying, oh, well, that's not too bad, we'll adapt to that, and I'm saying, well, Hey guys, you know, six degrees does actually mean a largely uninhabitable planet, so please explain how we're going to adapt to this. Um, you know, how we're going to adapt to a seven metre rise in sea level when all the ice in Greenland has melted. And <laughs> it's very interesting times. But the immediate concern, of course, is whether the uh, global oil economy is going to be a still functioning two or three years from now. There's plenty of evidence that we've peaked and we are now on the way down. So very interesting times since our agricultural food system is virtually totally dependent on oil. So once the oil supply goes down, the food supply goes down with it. Um, well, I do hope that um, by 2020 we won't be looking at cannibalism in New Zealand because people are starving to death. But Unless somebody deals with it now, that's what we're facing. Well, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm at the forefront of the rock face of activism, trying to wake people up out of this collective stupor which the bulk of society lives in, anaesthetized by celebrity trivia and sports trivia, and bigger and faster is better than smaller and slower. And Promoting the ideas of power down and permaculture, which are the only solutions. I'm there, right at the forefront, pushing the boundaries. Uh, I'm the extremist. I'm the shock troops that go in and upset people and confront them with the inconvenient truths. In fact, when I went into New Plymouth District Council offices um, a couple of months ago, somebody said to me, have you seen the inconvenient truth? And I said, actually, I am the inconvenient truth. So, <laughs> which uh, sort of was an amusing take on the thing, but um, I tell it how it is. I am still waiting for somebody to present me with some data that proves me wrong on anything I say, and all I hear is a deadly silence because nobody can produce any evidence that I'm wrong. So that's, that's the dismal part, to be quite honest. We are living with the consequences of huge mistakes that were made by humanity. 400 years ago. And yes, the people who are watching this do documentary uh, will be facing the sort of gross energy profligacy, um, rapid depletion of the Earth's resources, and the accumulation of, of pollution, primarily carbon dioxide, of course, in the atmosphere and in the oceans, which are rapidly making much of the planet uninhabitable. Uh, and it's very interesting, here we are in 2007, and it looks like Project White Man's Civilised Australia is as we speak. And when people say to me, oh, so what are you doing to stop this insanity? I said, well, I've written two books, and I've done television interviews, and I've done radio interviews, and I write articles, and I do activism and I do dozens of submissions to the district councils and I'm basically standing in front of this juggernaut saying slow down guys do you actually know where you're heading um, and the juggernaut just keeps on moving forward and probably I'm just going to get crushed by this juggernaut because uh, this, this, this system the, the business as usual doesn't want to know about anything that's not on their agenda of making money. That's really what it's all about. Well, at the moment I'm not sleeping particularly well because I know what's coming and I'm 
I'm working frantically within my own community to raise awareness and get some degree of preparedness. Um, basically, I've given up on, on the government. And, uh, most organisations, organisations like the AA, I mean, they're not serving the members of, of the AA, they're serving the global corporates. I mean, that whole thing is just all about transfer of wealth from poor people to rich people, transfer of wealth from poor nations to rich nations. This, this is the scheme, this is the system. And um, anybody who challenges this scheme either gets ignored or trampled on, basically. Um, that's, that's the way it is. So I'm, I'm aware of this, I've got no illusions about it. I, my efforts are actually to, to give my, my children and grandchildren a habitable planet to live on, but um, whether I'm going to be successful, I don't know. As I say to people, well, if I fail, um, at least I tried. I, I can, you know, go to my death whenever that might be. But I did my best, I tried. Um, and what more can one do? So, um, yeah, and as I said to one person, actually, New Plymouth District Council, if I fail, it will be your children who are going to be suffering for it. If we don't get a culture change very, very quickly, it's the next generation that's going to be paying for all this um, insanity that uh, the present generation is promoting. Um, we're transferring the debt from the present generation onto the next generation, which I believe is absolutely appalling. I mean, this is just scandalous. I mean, people criticise the Nazis for the things that they did to the Jews and various other people. And I say, well, actually, at least the Nazis did love their own children and did pro try to provide a better future for their own children. Our society can't even be bothered to do that, um, and our society is actually sabotaging the next generation's future. And I find that just morally abysmal. Um, and what's the response of the system? Oh, I'm some kind of extremist, of course, because I'm, I'm saying such things, and as I said to Harry Dinehoven just before Christmas, you think I'm an extremist. You say we can't do anything extreme to change the system. And I say, well, what is more extreme than an economic and political system which is going to make the planet uninhabitable? I can't think of anything more extreme than that. And you say that this is normal. I'm sorry, I think we've just got things a little bit twisted around here. I think I'm the normal sane person and you lot, you planet fuckers, and there's one just over there, are the people that have got it completely so, um, but you see, I'm the oddball. I'm, I'm, I'm the half percent or one percent who say, well, this system is failing. It's a total failure. We, we are enduring the politics of failure. Um, and, well, nobody wants to listen. Almost. That's not quite true, of course. I mean, there are, there are a few people. But the bulk of the population still are transfixed by the trinkets of consumerism. Yeah. About three years ago, I chose the year 2030, a bit arbitrarily, as basically the end of everything for, um, for most people, because um, by then we'll be well into oil decline, um, food supply will have diminished drastically, substantial die-off of humanity in the poorer parts of the world, abrupt climate change events, mm, large areas of what our currently productive um, farmland will have been turned into semi-desert. People won't be bothering to plant corn there because they know it won't grow. Um, all kinds of horrendous typhoons and hurricanes and it's hitting all oh, many parts of the world. Tens of thousands of people.